The Life and Sad Ending of Kristen Hirsch. Kristen Hirsch was born Martha Kristen Hirsch on August 7th, 1966 in Atlanta, Georgia, and moved to Newport, Rhode Island when she was six years old. Her father was a professor at Sal Virginia University in Newport and her mother, a special educator needs teacher. She was interested in music at an early age and wanted to learn guitar chords. As such, her father gave her a guitar when she was nine. With not a very good childhood, Kristen Hirsch's childhood is not really memorable as her peers. Her parents separated when Hirsch was 11, and her mother married the father of the best friend, Tanya Donnelly. Hirsch talked Donnelly into starting a band. They called themselves the Muses when they were 14. Hirsch was married to her former manager, Billy O'Connell, for 25 years until they divorced in 2013. She has four sons. As of 2020, she's been engaged to the former Throwing Muses bassist, Fred Abong. Hirsch has talked openly about her bouts with mental illness and its role in her musical process. A car accident at the age of 16 while she was riding her bicycle gave her a double concussion that affected the way she hears sounds. She described it as hearing ambient sounds continuously and the sounds would alter their sonic vocabulary until I was hearing syllables and drums. And then all these words would come. She stated that hearing pieces of songs in her mind compelled her to take pieces apart and craft songs from them. She also claims that she doesn't remember writing her early songs and that they wrote her. She has had more than one diagnosis for her condition, including schizophrenic disorder, bipolar disorder, and most recently, post-traumatic and disassociative disorder, which she says have been successfully treated with eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing therapy. With her past experiences with burning effort and passion, she has steadfastly stepped forward, and what she has been doing speaks in an affirmation to people who love to follow her. Throwing Muses was formed in 1981, when Hirsch and Donnelly were freshmen in high school. Friends from school, including Elaine Mendez, Becky Blumen, Leslie Langston, and David Narcisio, were part of the group, with Narcisio becoming a long-term member. Hirsch initially wrote and sang most of Throwing Muses' songs, often in changing tempos. Donnelly also contributed songs and lead vocals. Hirsch attended Sal Virginia University, majoring in archetypal psychology and philosophy, and the Rhode Island School of Design, but dropped out shortly before graduating to establish a band in Boston, Massachusetts, where they had been playing on the weekends. While at Salve, Hirsch befriended film actress Betty Hutton, who was attending the school in her 60s. Hutton also attended several Throwing Muses shows in Newport. The Throwing Muses were signed to 4AD, the first American group to be signed on the British label, and released the EP Chains Caged in 1987. Two releases followed The Fat Skyer and the album House Tornado. The 4AD Throwing Muses biography describes its sound at the time as joining the dots between elliptical post-punk harmonious folk jaggle and rockabilly thunder without ever settling into standard genre patterns. For the Throwing Muses in 1986 UK tour, the Boston-based Pixies, embarking on their first European tour was the opening band. The band signed a U.S. deal with Sire Reprise Records in 1987 and began touring the U.S. and Europe while recording albums with Hirsch writing most of the songs. The band became a trio when Donnelly left the group after 1991's The Real Ramona. In 1994, Hirsch began a solo career on Sire, Rise, and 4AD as an acoustic performer beginning with Hips and Markers, an album sparsely arranged around her vocals, guitar, a cellist, in contrast to the volatile electric sounds of her band work. Michael Stipe of R.E.M. made an appearance on the first solo album. After receiving some airplay and major media coverage for the Throwing Muses album University in 1995, Hirsch moved to Ryko Disc for the band's 1996 album, Limbo, and released her solo album, Strange Angels, in 1998. 
To better control her career and distribution of recorded material, she created Throwing Music Label with then-husband and manager Billy O'Connell in 1996. This enabled her to co-release some of her projects, including an ongoing download subscription service called Works in Progress for releases available through her label's website. Hirsch continued to offer solo releases online, releasing Sky Motel in 1999. Throwing Muses functions as a non-commercial musical enterprise focusing on touring over record sales and airplay. In 2014, interview Hirsch stated, As far as I'm concerned, music is not a commodity. It is something that people have earned by being human. They have the right to hear it and the right to share it and always have had churches and parties. That's how music happens. In 2001, Hirsch released Sunny Border Blue solo album, on which she again played nearly all instruments. She described the album as having even more intensely than her previous works as she continued her pursuit of songwriting as being a part of a way to transform ugly feelings into art. In 2003, she released The Grotto, an acoustic solo album of song sketches with personal lyrics set in Providence, Rhode Island, with Andrew Bird on violin and Hal Gelb on piano. On the same date, a self-titled album by Throwing Muses was also released, the first since Limbo. Both were recorded at Steve Rizzo's studio in Rhode Island. When Narciso was unable to tour for a full-time basis due to other commitments, Hirsch formed her power rock trio, 50 Foot Wave. In 2007, Hirsch released her first solo album in four years, entitled Learn to Sing Like a Star. NPR described Hirsch's emotional and raw pop songs as both accessible and off-kilter. Her 2010 memoir, Rat Girl, published in the UK as Paradoxal Undressing, is based on a diary she wrote when she was 18, touring with Throwing Muses, diagnosed with bipolar disorder and pregnant with her first child. Rob Sheffield, the New York Times, called it a uncommonly touching punk memoir and named it number eight in Rolling Stone's 25 greatest rock memoirs of all times. Throwing Muses reformed in 2013 and released Purgatory Paradise, a 32 track accompanied by a book designed by Narcisio, who works with a graphic designer. The book features photos, artwork, and lyrics by Hirsch, who is the band's first release in 10 years. At this point in her career, Hirsch's output was independently released online. She expressed that she wanted a complete break with the music industry, stating, Because we differ from the recording industry ethically, we have been asked to dumb down our product so many times. I have been asked to act and look like a bimbo so many times that I just decided I'm not going to turn my back on my music. I'm going to turn my back on them. I'm not going to turn my back on a woman. We're morally bound to participate in traditional recording industry because we disagree with it. So we continue to play music, which has nothing to do with the music business. Hirsch's 2015 book, Don't Suck, Don't Die, Give Up, Vic Chestnut, is a rumination of her friendship with the late singer-songwriter Vic Chestnut. She cites him as one of her songwriting influences and his fluid timing and grace of melody that breaks the rules of a meter. In October 16, she released the double album Wyatt and the Coyote Place in an accompanied book. Hirsch embarked on a tour in support of the album. On June 12, 2018, Christine Hirsch announced on her website that she had signed with Fire Records. Her new record, Possibly Dust Clouds, was released on October 5, 2018. She finished recording the album in May of the same year. In February of 2020, it was announced that Throwing Muses would release a new album, Sun Racket, on May 22nd. The release has been delayed to September 4th. Talking about the voice, Hirsch's vocal style ranges from softly melodic to impassioned screaming. She has an occasional vibrato that punctuates some of the music's more dramatic phrasings. Candid about her episodes of mental illness and despair, Her songs cover a vast spectrum of topics, including childbirth, love, surreal vignettes, death, emotional anguish, loss of custody of her son, and the shedding of relationships anxiety. 
All of us in this life have difficulties and problems. To get certain achievements, constantly trying is a must, mixed with a little luck. Though what Kristen Hirsch has shown in her life is a fascinating story, it has made us have more of a positive outlook on real life, whether today or tomorrow is still difficult. But just keep working. Great days will come.